Okay, so good morning everyone. Today we continue with our journal club presentations. Dr. Lina will talk to us about the stomach related lesions at routine head CT from the emergency department. It's a very large and complicated topic. I think we will need two sessions to finish it, so we should focus on it because it has a lot of interesting uh, Topics. Good morning, everyone. Our subject is about skull based related lesions at routine head CT from the emergency department, supervised by Dr. Ahmadiyya. Skull base, as we know, is formed from uh, frontal uh, and both uh, divided into three portions anterior, middle, and posterior uh, cranial fossa, which is formed. Uh, every portion about different uh, types of bones, uh, the skull base formed from frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, peritemporal, periparietal, and occipital bones. The bones and the foramina of skull base can be segmented in three main compartments, as we said, anterior, middle, and posterior. Uh, in this uh, image, we see that uh, the foramina of the skull divided uh, into three portions. The green one is the anterior cranial fossa. Uh, the middle and the purple one is the posterior cranial fossa. The bones of, uh, that overlie each uh, cranial fossa is different. In uh, this CT image, we see uh, that uh, the, the colored one are the bones with temporal, nasal bone, ethmoid bone, and vomer occipital bone, sphenoid, and zygomatic bones. This is also another image shows uh, the extracranial spaces. As we see, uh, there is uh, parotid space, carotid space, and uh, ma masticator space, and uh, parapharyngeal, prevertebral, and paravertebral, uh, spinal canal, and cord, uh, and uh, the green one is uh, nasal. nasal cavity. Anterior skull base formed from bones of ethmoid, frontal, sphenoid bones, laterally composed of orbital plates of the frontal bone and anterior medially by cribriform plate, crystal fovea ethmoidals, and ethmo of the ethmoid bone. Posteriorly, uh, it's related to flat surface of planum sphenoidum. Separated this uh, it from intracranial content. Separate the sphenoid side. The sphenoid from intracranial content. Mm -hmm. The central cranial base formed predominantly by the sphenoid and temporal bones. Anteriorly, the sphenoid tuberculum celli, anterior clinoid process, greater sphenoid wings defines the central skull base. Laterally, the temporal bone of the squamous portion of the parietal bone, the petrous ridge the pet, uh, of the temporal bone. Uh, forms the extent to the posterior cranial fossa. The cella turstica, posterior clinoid process, and the body of the sphenoid all uh, reside centrally. The central cranial uh, skull base shapes the middle cranial fossa, which houses the anterior temporal lobes, pituitary gland, cavernous sinuses, and the existing foramina of two and four. The optic canal. Two through six. Uh, six afro abducent. Two and uh, abducent. Optic canal traverses the sphenoid and houses the canalicular segment of the optic nerve. The osseous canal courses medially to the optic struts and inferior medially to the anterior clinoid process. The posterior skull base formed from temporal sphenoid and occipital bones. The anterior margin begins from temporal bone, potrus ridge, and the distant cilli. Posteriorly it is the occipital, bulb, uh, occipital bone, which forms the bulk of the posterior skull base, creates the foramen magnum, and uh, the house is the cervical medullary junction. The other foramen and the canal included posterior skull base are internal auditory canal, uh, and its internal opening, porous acousticus externus, and jugular foramen, and the hypocolossal canal. As we know, the jugular spine splits jugular foramen into pars nervosa and pars vasculosa. As we see in this image, we see detailed skull base anatomy. This coronal image, we see the anterior clinoid process, uh, the optic canal, the planum sphenoidalum, 
and the nasal cavity. In the video and canal medial cranial fossa, all we see in this image. We come in the axial image, we see superior orbital fissure, sphenoid sinus, greater sphenoid wing, squamous part of temporal bone, uh, and the middle cranial fossa, internal auditory canal, clivus, facial nerve canal, petrous uh, apex, tympanic cavity, mastoid air cell, and posterior cranial fossa. Uh, in this axial image, we see inferior orbital fissure and sphenoid bone, uh, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, foramen lacerum. Uh, this inferior orbital fissure and the sphenoid sinus, foramen ovale. Foramen ovale, spinosum, uh, carotid canal, clivus, uh, jugular foramen, uh, and the cribriform plate is here. Fovea ethmoidalis, ethmoid sinus, and uh, lamina paparegia, the middle wall of the orbit, maxillary sinus, orbit. And the anterior is this the form of the anterior cranial fossa. Detailed scale basis about uh, the posterior cranial fossa. As we see, here is inter, uh, the infratemporal fossa, the orbit, had the infratemporal fossa, who had the orbit, who had the ethmoid sinus, with sphenoid sinus. Will uh, foramen ovale. هذا خالص هذا هو كلش صغير البوينت اللي يجي عليه. Will uh, external auditory canal. هنا. In sagittal image we see the cribriform plate, planum sphenoidalum, separates from intracranial part, the cella torsica, the basion. هنا basion obtusion. Will uh, sphenoid sinus, we have an anterior arch of the C1 vertebra. This, uh, uh, in this uh, checklist, we uh, we see the structure that was, must be evaluated when you look uh, at the skull base uh, CT. Uh, in anterior uh, cranial fossa, we must look to the fractures. Uh, osseous erosions, dehiscence, and opacifications of posterior nasal spaces. This is the, all the foramina and uh, the content and the adjacent structures to it. In middle cranial fossa, we must to look uh, to middle ear and the bony erosion, abnormal fluid and soft tissue, and we must turn it to the window to a uh, lung window to see if there is any pneumocephalus. In posterior cranial fossa, we must look to any lytic or sclerotic bony lesions. Uh, we come to the uh, any, a, a patient is presented into the emergency department with signs symptoms of. Uh, first, we discuss about positional headache and the multiple cranial nerve deficit. Uh, spontaneous intracranial hypotension should be excluded. Uh, symptoms uh, of the patient was nausea, vomiting, neck pain, visual or hearing disturbance, vertigo, resulting from tension of the cranial uh, nerves owing to brain sagging. As we see in this image, Spontaneous intracranial uh, hypertension in young Hypo. hypotension and hyper hypotension presented with dizziness. Uh, in axial uh, scan, we see there is crowdiness of the foramen magnum. Uh, when we come to the uh, t our brain, CT brain A, we see soft tissue. Soft tissue. Uh, there is diffuse enhancement of the basal cisterna. What, 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 what? Effacement. Ef enhancement. Effacement. Diffuse effacement. So, what do you see here? Effacement. 
displacement means obliteration. Oh. So intracellular because of the cranial hypotension, mm. so the pressure of the CSF is low, hypotension. So the brain will sag, will fall, fall down. will be on near the base. So you can see the uh, foramen magnum is crowded. You do not see the CSF surrounding the uh, middle of the gutter. It's uh, clumped together. And when you go up a little bit, the cisterna that surrounds the brainstem are effaced, obliterated, and not seen because it's all close together because of hypotension. Again, you can see even the lateral ventricle appears small size. See the third ventricle, small size. Like and you can see the CSF is sub collecting uh, lateral. So this is due to intracranial hypo hypotension. In follow-up uh, image, we see uh, after uh, post-contrast image, we see diffuse uh, patchy meningeal enhancement. There's so, so what is the normal pattern of meningeal enhancement? Normally, the meninges, how do they enhance? <coughs> Normal. No. Ah, you want to the So, so we know. She the meninges. That's my thing. The meninge. It depends whether you are doing the MRI on 1.5 Tesla or 3 Tesla. Mm -hmm. The 1.5 Tesla, the standard that we all have here, for example, you see interrupted enhancement, areas of enhancement and areas of non-enhancement. Mm -hmm. Dot, 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 yani, uh, two, three centimeter enhancement, then no. Why? Two, three centimeter, then no. The, this is the norm. Okay. Why all they all not enhance? I know why, the normal pattern of meningeal enhancement. Okay. If you do, if you are doing it on a three Tesla, you'll see as a continuous meningeal enhancement. So we will talk about the 1.5 Tesla, the standard, okay. when you see this pattern of enhancement, which is like continuous Continu all over the cerebellum. This, the cerebellum, sorry, this is a pattern you see either in spontaneous intracranial hypertension or meningeal carcinomatosis. Also can give you a diffuse uh, meningeal enhancement, okay? Surprisingly, this case, in this case of spontaneous, of intracranial hypotension, you see it a lot with patients who have VP shunt. Mm -hmm. VP shunt due to over shunting, over shunting will result in intracranial okay, hypotension sir. and you can see this continuous meningeal enhancement, okay? Uh, this image we see so in such a post contrast, we see the effacement of prepontine stern here. Sagging of brainstem and cerebellar tosa ectopia. There's other uh, situation the patient presented with stroke like symptoms with non acute time course of or facial pain and paresthesia. The time frame for onset of patient symptoms can be unclear. A focal neurologic deficit related to skull base lesion can be mistaken for a new vascular ischemic stroke. A key example of an osseous metastasis or primary osseous tumor like chordoma close to skull base foramina, especially abducent nerve and hypoglossal nerve. In this situation, patient may present with inability to lateral abduct both eyes with tongue deviation, a condition reflecting cranial nerve compression associated muscular atrophy. Other is infectious process of skull base that occur is unusual stroke-like manifestation, uh, like infection of inflammation of Petra's apex, in setting of acute osteomastoiditis, can present with unilateral cranial nerve uh, palsy uh, as Gradingo syndrome. Gradingo syndrome is which cranial nerve palsy? Up to six. Ipsilateral facial nerve owing to involvement of the adjacent dura and trigeminal nerve in Michael cave may manifest. Non-enhanced image should de uh, depict uh, opacities of the tympanic cavity, mastoid air cell, and pneumatized petrous apex, usually with lysis of thin bony septa. Contrast MRI, more sensitive for evaluation of dural and optomeningeal enhancement. 
and it is imaging of complications such as adjacent cerebrites, intracranial abscess, or cavernous sinus thrombosis. Uh, blurry vision and headaches may be acute or subacute presentation uh, should investigate thoroughly with MRI. The first emergent examination is non-enhanced CT to exclude subarachnoid hemorrhage or intracranial masses. If the patient is woman, childbearing age, obese, idiopathy intracranial hypertension should be excluded, uh, especially if papilledema is present in physical examination with pulsatile tinnitus. Another CT finding of idiopathic intracranial hypertension include enlargement of skull-based foramina. If compare it uh, foramina to either, we see one foramina is larger than the other. An attempt to expand cella turcica, the, the patient described in, uh, in, and if there's underlying increased intracranial pressure. Uh, additional finding in MRI we see is CSF in the optic nerve increased CSF in optic nerve, intraocular protrusion of optic disc, optic nerve tortuosity or enhancement, flattening of posterior globes, transverse dural venous sinus stenosis, and slit-like ventricles. As we see in this image, if we compare foramen ovale in this patient, we see in this there is enlargement of the foramen ovale. And in this image, there is empty cell sign. If we see here, there's increased CSF surrounding the optic nerve. And there is stenosis of venous, transverse venous sinus. So, empty cell torsica or partially empty cell torsica can be a normal variant and can be a, a manifestation of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So, that's the importance of reporting empty or partially empty cell. It can be normal, it can be part of intracranial hypertension. So clinical correlation in this case it's is needed important. to exclude it. And you have to, whenever you see empty or partially empty cell, you need to look for the optic nerve, whether it is tortuous or increased perineural CSF. Or foramina. Or foramina. Another entity is about seizure. If the patient presented with new seizure, facial swelling, or acute change in mental states, the diagnosis of occult-based encephalocele or CSF leak should be strongly considered. Protrusion of brain parenchyma through the osseous <coughs> and dural defects prior to trauma, typically upper at anterior cranial fossa cribriform plate, and middle cranial fossa tigman tympani or tigman mastoidum. Damaging of underlying protruding brain parenchyma result in epileptogenic focus. Visualization of the defect uh, is uh, often difficult and in axial image, so coronal image should be reviewed. Traumatic cavernous carotid fistula or pseudoaneurysm can occur immediately following traumatic skull based fractures. Cavernous sinus thrombosis has similar presentation in subacute trauma or infectious process like invasive sinus diseases. Special attention should be paid to exclude any asymmetric bulging or cavernous sinus or enlargement of the superior ophthalmic vein, which can be seen in cavernous carotid fistula or pseudoaneurysm or thrombus. So what's the difference between an aneurysm and a pseudoaneurysm? An aneurysm has a wall. Mm. Pseudoaneurysm has no wall. How do we know that this is a pseudoaneurysm and not an aneurysm? Aneurysm continuation, aneurysm continuation with the wall of the vessel. Do you think you can see the wall in anyone in an aneurysm that is 3 4 millimeter in the MCA? So, can you feel the wall? Have you ever seen the wall of an aneurysm? It's a post contract. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see. Show me for the aneurysm. How to differentiate? whether this blood outside the vessel is due to aneurysm or pseudoaneurysm. History and the trauma. Anywhere in the body, pseudoaneurysm is post-traumatic. Yes. 
لازم اكو تروما اوكي لازم عندنا هيستوري اوف تروما ما يصير نكتب سودو انيوريزم without history of trauma لازم Pathologic entities of the skull base, anterior skull base. What we look for every anterior or middle or posterior cranial fossa about the pathologies. In anterior skull base, intracranial extension of sinonasal malignancy, infection, as we as congenital lesions, conditions secondary to trauma, neoplasms in nasal cavity, posterior nasal spaces, paranasal sinus. Sinonasal infections in bacteria, invasive fungal agents, aspergillus, and zygomastis are commonly diagnosed in immunocompromised patients. The patient uh, may present with headache, photophobia, seizure, or focal neurological signs. Complications include subdural and epidural empyema, cerebrites, brain abscess, meningitis, which has often a surgical emergencies. Osteomyelitis of frontal bone can be spread outward and form a subgallial abscess, subgallial abscess, described as pot puffy tumor. Polyposis of, uh, with secondary fungal infections can erode the anterior skull base, which can develop into meningitis and cause CSF leak. As in this uh, image, we see Invasive bacterial and fungal sinusites in immunocompromised women presented with headache and facial pain. In non-enhanced CT, where there is opacification uh, of the posterior nasal space, with there is osseous erosion. Of the ethmoid and sphenoid sinus. Ethmoid and sphenoid sinus, paranasal. In uh, post contrast, we see uh, enhancement of the wall. Uh, of the sinus, and there is a well-defined lesion uh, that uh, abnormal, uh, abnormally in, uh, shows enhancement, and this is the extension, extra sinus extension uh, of pus collection, abscess. So you can see first there's an erosion of the bone here. This is all opacified. The ethmoidal yes. nerve cells and the sphenoid sinus completely opacified. This bone is eroded. This is a bone window, axial CT scan. So we have no contrast here. While on the post-contrast MRI, are the T1 or T2 renal? T1 has a fat. Any minor will be a contrast for the T1. I don't know. Well, Madame B contrast doesn't include T1. What could I do? Post-contrast, let's go ahead, T1. فهذا كله شوي بوست كونتراست انهانسمنت للبارانيزال سينوسز اند يو كان سي هير ا ثيك وول كوليكشن اند اتس اكستندينج بوستيريورلي تيل هير ذس از اول ثيك وول انهانسينج كوليكشن انديكيتينج انترا كرينيال اكستنشن اوف اند ابسس فورميشن اوف ذا سينونيزال انفكشن سي بي ان كلا اوكي Uh, pathologies in central skull base, there is a neoplastic, infectious, inflammatory, and traumatic processes that affect. Slow-growing tumors such as schwannoma can expand to skull base foramina. More aggressive tumors demonstrate a destructive process. Tumors affecting the cavernous sinus may cause neurologic uh, symptoms Near related to the neurovascular structures involved include trigeminal nerve dysfunction, which causes facial numbness and pain, visual field deficit owing to compression of optic nerve, uh, ischemic uh, deficit owing to carotid artery compression and ocular motor deficit, ptosis, diplopia, and uh, anisocoria, or ophthalmoplegia. والله باوعد عليه. جميل ديش نوتس؟ ما ما لا ما كتبت لانه باوعد على اساس عرفته. هو نفس المكان اللي بي الباثولوجي يطلع مو تشيك تشيك والله باوعد عليه. As we see here 
in the foramen ovale, there is uh, this case of schwannoma in young patient presented with right-sided facial numbness. This then enhanced uh, CT show expansion of the right foramen ovale. When compared to the left, there are no overlying erosion suggest aggressive process. The finding goes with uh, trigeminal uh, nerve schwannoma. Patient with tumors of uh, anterior clivus presented with sign and symptom related to local invasion. Clival metastases are often aggressive soft tissue masses that usually manifest in patients with known history of malignancy. Chordoma of the skull base are uncommon but malignant arise at midline clivus and are typically where circumscribed expansile soft tissue masses that may contain irregular intratumoral calcification. The chordoma present with calcification. The differential diagnosis of clival sphenooccipital lesion include chordosarcoma, metastasis, plasmocytoma. Pituitary adenomas are benign lesion, uh, different in size, mostly are macroadenomas of anterior lobe uh, of pituitary gland, most common of cellular masses uh, from 20 years of age and account only for up to 10% of all intracranial neoplasms. As we see here, uh, this patient, middle-aged man with significant mental history presented with isolated tongue deviation. Uh, when we look into uh, CT image, uh, axial, we see the, there is erosion of clivus, left aspect of clivus near the hypoglossal nerve. That's why the patient presented with tongue deviation. Later on, the patient diagnosed with metastatic prostatic cancer. Now in the clival invasion, must patient have previous uh, uh, cancer? Yeah. About. I think we stop here. Okay. And we continue next week. Inshallah. Because we do have a little bit time left. Okay. okay. So, any questions? Any comments?